Okay. Okay. An advantage. All right. Okay. Okay. Yay, we got a big big crowd. Mm -hmm. That was so fun. Yeah. So I delivered my child Lee um, back in April of 2022. Uh, so she's a little over one now. Um, I had a wonderful, wonderful experience. The nurses really had the opportunity to make or break my experience and they totally made it. Um, I did get the midwife that I wanted. She had to come home for 30 minutes that before I had my yeah. baby and literally just caught her. Um, but it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. So I'm very, very, very glad that I went with them. And I've had awesome experience with clients. Hi. Lovely. You guys can take that love seat wherever I can bring a chair over and hang out with them. But So what do you guys know about it? What did you hear about it? Do you have any friends that have your friends? I think good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I've been asked for Filling your house. Yeah. yeah, that is, we wear lots of hats, and that is definitely one of them. <laughs> we want you both to come out happy and pleasantly surprised at this experience. <laughs> that's great. What about you? Um, I don't know anybody that's used to the work that's new, but just from where I looked it up, um, that's one thing I was surprised about. I didn't know that it would work with you beyond. Yeah, absolutely. So your typical birthday. Hi, honey. Sorry, new mom time. Yeah. Good. How are you? Yes. <laughs> okay. So This is Claire. Hi. <laughs> she comes here. She came to this one last year. Yes. And yeah. This time last year, I met um, Micah and. Meg, I believe it was, um, and I had signed up for this class, and it actually just turned out that um, we got like a one-on-one -on -one because um, of scheduling, so really talked with her. I didn't know much about what a doula was. Um, I honestly thought you could only have one if you had a home birth, which just wasn't my plan. I wanted a hospital birth, um, and learned so much about the birth process, so much about what a doula is, like the support that they can give you, um, and so connected with Micah. Um, and one thing that I really personally liked about Blissful Baby was the fact that I got to meet and interview a lot of different people. So um, finding and clicking with somebody and immediately when I met Caitlin, we just had like an instant connection. It was very easy to see that like this was somebody that I wanted on my birth team, there with my husband and myself, um, and we welcomed our little boy. So Caitlin 
I think I signed with you at like 12 weeks. I was yeah, so, was early. I was so early on. Um, I had all that time to establish like the best friendship. I mean, yes. she's definitely one of my clients. She's yeah. definitely a friend at this point. Yes. And so, um, the most special part that nobody tells you about having a jewel is that you've been part of your family forever. Um, I know I'm going to cry too. I'm like a week postpartum. This is probably a bad thing to say. Um, but, but they, they do. Um, I went on in for an induction on July 4th. Um, which was not part of my birth plan, but Caitlin reminded me to advocate for myself throughout this entire experience. Um, so I kept doing that and stayed true to what I wanted. Um, came to a date with my doctor and my providers that we thought was good. Um, turned out to be July 4th. And so went in for uh, the process of that to begin. Um, and Caitlin was there from my first contraction on July 4th until my son took his first breath on the 6th. Every moment that I doubted I could do it, every moment that I said, you know, something else had come up that I needed to advocate for myself, my son, my body, um, and the birth that I wanted, she was right there. Another huge thing was her support for my husband the entire time. Um, it, we are first time parents. Um, neither of us knew what to expect with her. And it was really wonderful and special to have her right there, not only for my support, but to somebody to look at him and say, you know, this is normal. This is just how she's feeling. Or here's some things you can help her do to get through these contractions. Or take a shower because stuff's about to get really crazy. There was one point she looked at me and she was like, "Hey, things are gonna pick up here. Like, if you want to go eat, go eat really quickly." Mm -hmm. um, and so all of that, you know, made my birth better because it was somebody taking care of the man that I love, who you know I'm having this child with. Um, and so yeah, it was. A um, crazy experience. She reminded me to advocate for myself the entire time. And I am very proud of myself to say that that resulted in me vaginally having a nine pound baby <laughs> when I learned that the doctors on call wanted me to have a C section. Except, right, I don't think I got to tell you that. No, I yeah, the doctor who delivered me was like, no, she's got this. Like, we're going to do it. But the other two doctors on call were like, oh, that would have been me. Like, we would have done a C section, um, which at the end of the day, the goal is a happy, healthy baby. But Caitlin was there in those final moments where I wasn't sure I could get through those last five minutes. Um, I pushed for three and a half hours and she never left my side during that. Um, and it just worth more than words is the support and the love that she gave to our family. Um, getting there, being there, just everything. Um, I can't advocate enough for a doula, uh, whether it be Caitlin or somebody else on my like, team. Um, Building your birth team is very important. No one tells you what to expect for birth, right? Like we want a book or a TikTok or an Instagram or something you can watch. It's like, this is exactly what's going to happen. Um, that doesn't happen. <laughs> so it's wonderful to have that doula as your support person um, for yourself, for your family. I know Caitlin walked out multiple times and even just talked to my family um, just to give updates. I had an anxious mother who wanted to bust down the doors of the maternity center. Yeah. Like I said, multiple hats, bodyguard, one of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, like I said, you know, when you find your doula and you add them to your birth team, you bring somebody else to be part of your family. And so for my son's life, you will know that Caitlin was right there and a huge essential part of being there. So, yeah. I know, I'm not going to cry. I can't cry, I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the things that um, I have had the pleasure of just meeting all of these wonderful families and these being there for these births, for these you know new lives that are going to be in, in, in this world now and making a difference every single day, and so you know just being with them and hearing their stories, um, you know whether that be the struggles of how they got pregnant, um, multiple losses, or you know this is sixth or seventh child, all all of the different ways of life how they got to where they are. Um, and really getting to know them um, and then being a part of this miraculous, you know, event and supporting them throughout that. Uh, it's just been really special. It's, it's been so special for me. Um, I truly feel like I was called through this. So, um, I'll this here. You guys want to write down? Claire, are you, uh, you sticking around? You think? First time we're going to head out because I am part time cow now, too. So I'm up here in between oh, nursing. Wow, I love you so much. It's very Did you want to go now? Yeah, or? I'm going to go now. I'm sorry about this. Here, here, here. She should go up here. She said 5 43. Oh, 5 43. Oh, 
She's the one who um, collaborated and got all these tools together to be working on her team. Um, one of the best things about our team aspect is, like Claire said, um, you know, you get to interview with a lot of different doulas. We all operate the same way on Lisa Baby Steps. We have a lot of the same, um, like, you know, prenatal visits, postpartum visits as far as a birth doula. Um, but we all have different passions and different things. And we're all, you know, we're all our unique people so we've all had unique experiences and stuff My we've got moms gosh. who have been able to do a vaginal birth after a cesarean so we are able to connect with those uh clients more um we've got you know new moms we've got moms who aren't even moms yet but happen to isa works at a lactation um office so she has immense amount of breastfeeding specialty um you know and reaching everything up her sleeve um, so just, and everybody's personality is just a little different too. So being able to find that perfect fit for you and your family is super, super important. Um, so here's our team. So starting up at the top left, Milk Maker. Um, so that's Megan. She uh, used to do births, but now she primarily does postpartum work. Um, she is a little over a year and a half postpartum with her own son. Um, and I don't believe she has plans to step back into the birth world as of now. Um, so that's Megan. Micah is right there in the middle. You'll meet her in just a little bit. Um, Victoria is that top right. Um, that is two, those are two of her babies and she recently welcomed twins. Um, so Micah does primarily births. Um, she is postpartum uh, certified, but she doesn't take any postpartum clients at the moment. Um, she's got three little ones of her own, including one that just turned one last week. Um, so she's a little busy at the moment. She also is our childhood educator um, on the team and teaches an amazing childhood education class, um, as well as private childhood education if you just wanted a more individualized um, class. Um, so then, yeah, Victoria just recently welcomed twins. So now she's got her hands full. Um, her oldest baby passed uh, a couple of years back. So she's got her hands full of all baby boys now. Um, three under two, so that's fun. Um, just made it by one day. Um, there is Madison over there on the bottom left. We've got Issa, there's me, and then there's Anna. So this is our little team. Um, we all do, everybody down at the bottom, we all do births. Um, Anna and Issa both do uh, postpartum work as well, though. Um, Anna is currently pregnant and due in October as well. Uh, October is a very, very busy month for us. Um, so I don't believe she'll be taking any more births, but they are also, Anna and Issa are also both placenta encapsulation um, specialists. So if you guys are interested in keeping your placenta and either wanting your placenta work done or encapsulation for your placenta or anything like that, uh, we've got the hookup. So. Um, they are fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. All right, so imagine you are going to go hike some massive, massive. Hi, Micah. Lovely Micah coming off straight from a prenatal. <laughs> I'll give you her big old birthday. <laughs> My bag won't stay. Yeah. Oh, geez, that is pretty nice. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this is your favorite slide, clearly. Um, so imagine you're about to hike this massive mountain. Um, you know, imagine all the things that you have to get repaired. Your gear, um, maybe taking classes to figure out, you know, all the breathing and everything, all the research that comes into all of it um, and everything. And you're offered a guide to help walk you through it. Um, you have the option to say no. You can do it by yourself. You probably could. As you see, Claire already came on. Oh. <laughs> Um, you could probably totally do it by yourself. Would that be the smartest thing? You know, that's up to you and how much you're prepared. But would, you know, would having a guide maybe make it a little easier to help you with those bumps and twists and turns around the, along the way? And, you know, all those um, little mountains that you have to encounter while I'm at the top. Um, so that's kind of what we are as doulas. Uh, you could totally do this by yourself. You possess everything within you to do this by yourself. But we're also here to be able to help you navigate the twists and turns that birth 
will always work. The one thing that we can guess about birth is that it's something that's it. It's that's it. It's just everything that um, you know, it's never going to be the same. No two women are gonna have the same pregnancy, no two women are gonna have the same birth. Um, and so we're able to help guide through all of that. Um we're there for you. Yeah. So we're not reporting to any doctors, we're not reporting to any nurses, we're not any health So we're there for you. Um, for the dads, just as much as the moms. Sometimes the dads are the deciding factor, and they're like, I don't know what to do. So there's for the dads. Well. dads oh, yeah. So, yeah. 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 So we already went through who everybody is and what we all offer. I mean, we just, in general, say if you feel safe and you feel secure, you have yourself set up for success. That's when you labor the most natural, the most distinctive, and sometimes that's what we do as well. As well. Instead of just, like, we can't all just make it a safe space. We can kind of walk out any stressors from the outside. That can be during pregnancy, that can be during birth, but also because society has a lot of things, and sometimes just asking someone that has gone through it or that is kind of working in that field helps. And we're able to make your hospital stay feel as if it was at home, or at least bring some of the comforts from home. I highly suggest you bring some of your food from um, right We even had a dad bring a family. <laughs> he joked about it during class. It sure enough did. Like yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Nope. They all wrote it down on here. All right. So here were your guesses: eight hundred dollars, two thousand to three thousand dollars. We've got one k. Yeah, I know, right? One k, one to one and a half k, and that's it. So, um, a couple of you were pretty spot on. Um. The average doula in our area charges between eight fifty and twelve fifty. Um, we're right there in the middle at the uh, sweet spot of a thousand dollars. But and we'll go through all of what that would get you, um, how much bang for your buck you're getting, and all that fun stuff. Um, it's really hard to put a price on how much doula can help, though, especially in certain scenarios. You know, we all had our. Um, our sprint births, where we're there at the actual birth for maybe four or five hours. And then uh, I recently had one that was 36 hours. So it really um, just varies on, on how long, you know, you can't you can never guess how long your birth's gonna be, but having somebody that's there throughout the entirety and who's only focused on you, not maybe other patients, or, um, you know, only have a 12 hour shift, uh, or rotating, like, okay, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we don't switch out. Unless it's like twenty four hours. Sometimes. So Claire went over a lot of it. Yeah. Over how how she was helped. Yeah. Yeah. We just always say we're not medical providers. That is super important. We're not going to touch any. I mean, if baby comes flying at us, we're not going to drop the baby. No. <laughs> but we're not doing anything <laughs> medical. So we're not even allowed to take a blood pressure um, We have experience in the medical field. So like we know what's going to go on and you can bounce off my ears some of us and say, hey, what's your, what's your experience with this and this intervention? But we're not ever going to touch you further down. You wouldn't want us to, you want to support you in the other ways. Yeah, let's leave those separate. We cannot make decisions for you. We always say we make suggestions and you make decisions. So we can suggest a lot, but if you're just like, hey, don't care, then no. We can provide you with all the information for different, um, you know, induction methods if that was the way that your birth is going or any other comfort measure options other than a girl. Um, you know, we're able to send you all of these resources and stuff. Um, one thing I always tell my clients is, uh, you know, just because your OB or your nurse or your midwife you know, they've been through all of this schooling, whatever, don't believe them right off the bat. Do your own research, figure out um, these things for yourself and make your own opinions based on those. Same with us. Just because we tell you something doesn't mean you believe us right off the bat. We want you to do your research, but we can also provide some resources for you and, you know, the education backed up with behind some things you may be hearing um, or things that you may be hearing that aren't necessarily correct. <laughs>
there's there's a lot of evidence like on how we can see yeah how we can better yeah. this is an important one i show this one in my class because it just talks about um so it says like the cesarean rate for first time of birth was 25 percent um and 13.4 with the doula but when labor was induced that cesarean rate went up to 58 and that's actually what we can see in this area as well. I see a lot of inductions, a lot of inductions in this area. So right now, like the number one reason probably in this area specifically, the forces are And so sometimes we can kind of navigate around that induction in the first place and kind of help you get to the point where you like cut. Confidently yeah. say, I do not need an induction no, and I do not want an induction. No, Sometimes, no, yes, there no, are medical no. reasons. There's nothing we can do, but then we can still kind of help. Not thinking, I mean, some, yes, we do experience cesareans. We cannot promise any outcome. We cannot promise you're not going to have a cesarean, but there's definitely a lot of risk of that. And even um, the births that I've attempted that have ended in cesareans. Um, where those outcomes may have, you know, it was very likely they were probably going to have a cesarean the whole time, but they felt extremely heard and understood everything was happening along the way um, to where they still come out of that birth having overall positive experience, um, which is huge. No matter how your birth ends, no matter what procedure is happening throughout your labor, um, we want you to be able to come out of it feeling heard and understood. Um, and it may not always end up exactly how you wanted or imagined, um, but the absolute least that we could do is make sure that you're well informed throughout um, and making sure that you use um, wherever wish that was absolutely possible of yours was listened to and put into practice. We always want to say, we always say if you're 80 years old, you are going to remember how people treated you if you were the one that you listened to or not. Um, and that's the goal for us. Make sure that you remember it as a positive experience no matter the outcome. So we always say we help during pregnancy, birth, obviously we're there for the birth. But even for postpartum, like especially first time parents are like, oh my gosh, have a child. I don't know what to do with it. So you can call us. Even that we don't stop working and helping. We're, we, we have resources. So even if it goes beyond an hour to People at 2 a.m. in the morning, to do still text us and say, This is what's going on. And the advocacy doesn't end the second baby pops out. Um, you'll find that as mothers, and I'm sure you know this isn't your first baby, I'm assuming. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you'll find that you know, you're constantly advocating for your baby, you're constantly advocating for um, that they won't be able to tell you what they want. Um, and so, you know, you'll be using your best judgment as a mom to um, decide these big things for your baby. Hopefully they're not big things, um, but they feel like big things in the moment. So reminding you that you have the opportunity to advocate throughout this program. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we have a, since we have that wide variety of like price points, we have doulas at charge 400 that are baby doulas. Um, <laughs> Caitlin just call herself a baby doula. Um, but in general, it doesn't really matter how much a doula charges you. It, you need to want this person in your work space. If I show up and you're like, yeah, that's not gonna work, then you're not gonna have a positive work experience. Um, so questions. Do I like the doula? Does my husband or my partner like the doula as well? Because you can tell if your partner is And do you feel comfortable asking them questions? Do you feel comfortable asking, you know, us as doulas questions or saying, hey, no, I know that this is, you know, something we talked about before, but it's time to change. And are they willing to change with your plan as well? We can't want your birth outcome more than you can. And so we, our goal is to help you be able to mold and but also know when to stand your ground um in certain scenarios there are doulas in this area we don't sugarcoat stuff um that will tell you we do not support medicated births so if you say i want an epidural there are specific doulas that will say okay, then i'm not the right 
and there are homework to lists that only take homework and start taking high school works. Um, so it really, there's a wide variety of doulas. Like she said, baby doulas. So, um, you know, that Which isn't necessarily No, not at all. <laughs> a lot of times um, these baby doulas are, come out the gate super feisty and ready to get to work because they're not all burnt out after being at birth for the last couple of years. Um, but a baby doula is, we, we call them baby doulas. They're um, mostly uncertified doulas um, who are working towards certification. So they're um, willing to take on um, clients within a certain typically within a certain due period um at a lower cost to be able to obtain that certification because in order to certify you have to have a set of and not all people and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you also have to know if a certified doula if being if a doula being certified really matters to you um because in the end a certification is also like we're not working for the hospital, but we're working for this agency. We have a list of rules and everything that we have to follow by working with these different um, organizations and everything. And so um, it's just really dependent on what you want, what you want out of your birth. And so just doing the research for all the, um, all the certified, certified agencies and everything like that. It's fine to ask questions. Yes. And to ask, like, do you have any extra training? Some of us are baby certified, some of us um, are placenta encapsulation specialists. You know, this is proper. Like, some just have additional training or extra services that they offer, and that's just find the one that fits and that works for you. Those are questions that you also have on your handout. Um, some people like to ask when you already have attended, for some it doesn't really matter. Um, just keep in mind, um, your average birth doula in this area takes about two to three breaths per month. So depending on how long they've been doing that, multiply it, and then you may get a rough estimate of how many births they've done. Um, but then of course, life happens and some babies are delivered super duper early and some babies are delivered super late. Um, so there may be, you know, more since we can give you one of these you want to handouts to email to them. <laughs> awesome. The hell um, but we, you know, um, <laughs> no, 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 you're fine. No, we all, we are both moms, so pregnancy brain, mom brain. <laughs> it continues like, for the rest of your life. Mom brain. <laughs> but yeah, those are some good questions. You also have on your hand out, like, how can I pay for my Yeah. We always say, if, if, if this is your first, you're probably going to have a baby registry. Put the service on the baby registry for a childbirth class. If you say, okay, I cannot, why, whatever, I cannot afford a birth school, of, try to at least have a baby pay for a childbirth class. You will get what. The, like you'll be set so up for a much better birth in the same way that um uh, i i like to, uh, to i feel like births and weddings are on like kind of like the same scale as far as like they happen once in your life most of the time hopefully you know we always hope that um and how much more do you prepare for your wedding how much more do you you know not even necessarily how much more do you spend but the wedding planner, the photographer that you have to have to capture this once in a lifetime, you know, moment for you guys. How much do you spend on, and how much time do you spend researching your dress and your caterer, and I mean, just everything that goes into that one night. Put in that same amount of effort into your birth, and it will pay off immensely. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna read all of that. <laughs> Yeah, but like, but here, like I said, um, the best births are not always the ones that didn't get into C-section. I've had moms that have had amazing outcomes or have felt very positively about their births because even the end of the C-section, um, it always is defined about how you feel about them um, and about how you feel about how everything went. You know, her resp uh, perspective makes all decisions and everything, um, physically and mentally, what's in care of. Your birth is also initially going to influence the way if you're planning on breastfeeding, which is nursing and pumping, you know, that can influence that part. So if you had a very unventional birth, you can expect a few more bumps in the road than just a nursing.
Yeah. <laughs> I know you mentioned that you can have like two to three births a month. I guess what would you do if somebody comes early? Or like, have you ever had it happen when you're with somebody in a birth and one of your other I'm sure it's fine. Well, I know I've had I had to use some different day events for three years. I have to use backup ones. Oh, yeah. So we always have backups on within the team because we are a team. Um, those doulas will have a backup doula available. Sometimes you get to meet them, sometimes you don't get to meet them, which is, we really just, like go for it. You need to see who may be there, um, but everybody has a backup doula. And that's the wonderful thing about our team is that a majority of the time, whoever is available for your birth, um, we'll try to hop on even and if you wanted to meet your backup doula, whoever would be available for that time frame, but maybe had other clients or something, we're able to set up calls with them um, so you can chat with your backup as well. Um, I've had three births in one week. I was with a client on a Monday that wasn't supposed to deliver for another eight weeks. And then I had a baby on a Wednesday and I, I joined a family on Friday and they delivered on Saturday. So, you know, we're good with bouncing back and forth between all of that. Um, We've but, had it happen that one of our doulas was on vacation and a baby came way earlier than expected. And then that's when a backup doula has to come in. Um, we do go officially on fall around 37, 38 weeks, and that's when we usually don't leave the area when we our phones are never off. So we have specific yeah. ringtones for our moms. Um, we are available day and night. I mean, if you have, if you encounter a doula that says, okay, well, I'm taking four to six clients a month, your chances, obviously, that the doula is going to be at a different part of, or higher. Mm -hmm. um, I take two clients a month. Um, I don't ever want to get into the situation where I have to pull out a folder and be like, oh, okay, this is Stephanie. I don't remember anything about her. I usually know my families, and that's what we want to do. That's why we don't take and like Claire was saying, you know, she hired me super duper early on. So we were, and she was just one of those clients, you know, I, I've had them everywhere in between of um, where we talk like practically every day, even not about birth things. Um, and it's just wonderful. And it becomes this big friendship. And um, then I have clients on the complete opposite spectrum where I maybe heard from them like twice before their prenatal visit. And, you know, throughout reaching out and all of that. And it's just ghosts. And then we, uh, attend the birth and it's wonderful and everything goes great and you know that's it um so it really it really just depends and we I know I appreciate both both oh. spectrums you know I mean however you feel comfortable communicating with your doula and everything but um the ones that end up in friendships like Claire's like they're just all for each other I'm very glad she's like one it doesn't matter no nope. there was that was one of the things there was concern about you know, the bank she doesn't mind it she was so she was mostly concerned about that so when she did she just she was like i can see it all over your face you're so excited i proved and i was like i am i wasn't gonna tell you but i'm so happy it was wonderful so we really don't care if anything will be a little excited <laughs> we get excited about weird stuff. So. Very weird. That's why we're meant to do this. <laughs> Any more questions? So, if you have over a 24 hour birth, would you then call in the backup? Potentially. It depends. Yeah. So, if, for example, mom gets an epidural and then she rests and dad rests, and then we will take some time to rest as well, um, go and eat something. We always reserve it. So our contract specifically will say that we reserve the right to call in a backup because we believe that you deserve a doula that is a hundred percent on top of things. Um, but it's only had one hour. Yeah, we right. had one six hours. Yeah, yeah, we had one situation where one of our doulas was pregnant and she just got to a point of physical exhaustion. And she was like, "I'm sorry, I." have to call in someone that's fresh and that will support you the best way but I can. Um, and then we switch out a couple yeah. hours later. She was just like, I'm so fancy. I want to go back. But she needed something else that typically we, I mean, Caitlin, I told Caitlin when she first started, it was like, what, when I, when I first started, one of the 
was in this area said, if you make it through the fast ones and then you have a marathon and you still like your job, you're going to continue doing it. And that's what happened. She almost missed a bar and then she had a marathon and she's still doing it. So, but yeah, it's wonderful. It's still, but yeah, you want a, you want somebody who's able to be fresh. So you and dad are resting or you and Brittany are resting allow us to get that rest as well so we can be fresh for you and you guys you know wake up and that may be rest at your home for that you know for that birth it was uh, a plan transfer um but while they were resting we were sleeping on baby's nursery floor so um just getting in and any seconds we could like I suggest to you guys every second couch. Couch. chairs absolutely yeah for sure but yeah um, watch tv shows at 2 a.m with dad and all this stuff and, yep. so. <laughs> but that's definitely something to ask, you know, your doula, what's your, uh, do you have a time limit on how much I'm going to be here? Or if I, if they're here for over a certain period of time, do you charge more after how many hours? Um, you know, ask all the questions, um, read all the reads the contract very thoroughly. Um, and don't be afraid to ask those. Do you ever like start in like the house with somebody? And like labor for a little yeah. while and then go into the we office. offer that. Um not every group will offer that, but uh -huh. for us it's important. Uh -huh. um, we have a lot of families that do that, especially the ones that say I want to go for the next yeah. mm -hmm. But then the goal is to stay at home as long as possible. So our rule is if we say we need to go, then we want everybody to trust us. Yes, we don't want to squat a baby, we don't want to mm -hmm. so but sometimes it's just like one contraction and we hear a specific sound and we're like, Yeah, we should go. Um, but that's my sprint. We offer that, and sometimes the family plan is, "Hey, okay, let's live at home." But then plans change, and like, okay, we called you to come here, but we're actually on the way to the hospital. That just happened so to me last week. Yeah, I'm excited. And then we just turn around and go to a hospital. Everybody has different preferences. Everybody has a different comfort level. If we have a very anxious mom, then her preference may be to be in the hospital. If that's the safe space. Then, but some practices will make your son as working in the birthing program. They will tell you to not show up unless you're five to six. Mm -hmm. So they want you to stay at home as long as possible and then show up and establish labor. Mm -hmm. I want constant communication with my clients as well. I mean, we want you to let us know what's happening. Yeah. And then at some point, we usually call or we text or the dad starts texting that's us. That's the fun part. Like, that's, when we <laughs> yeah, that's when we know. That's when we know we should real. probably be in touch. Sometimes we call and we, act, we talk to you as mom. Well. Yeah. And if at some point you're like, okay, hold on a second, and we can hear you going through it, me, I want to offer it. it. Yeah. But initially, it comes down to you saying, I need you. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. And again, some moms want us to be with them earlier, later in the game, but we just always say we can be a disturbing factor, and we want labor to be as undisturbed as possible, so if you call us and we're just like, yeah, I don't know, this doesn't feel right, we don't have If, yeah. If you if, ask us to leave, we'll leave. And absolutely. <laughs> I've walked out of rooms. I've gone out of the cafe just to give, you know, mom and dad a moment to, you know, either process what's been going on or just to rest together. Um, do all of that for this one. Um, it's pretty average. Yeah. At, at least one of the um, We want to make sure that that first hour for you, as long as you can be happy. Um, is relatively undisturbed. Um, so our plan on breastfeeding, we can get you through that initial first latch if you'd like. Um, we do have lactation training, um, but uh, we'll always refer out if you know, people have more complex issues or whatever that we can um, initially help with. But, um, but yeah, so we want to be there for those, those initial hours. And then um, we come in for a postpartum visit as well. Um, we typically only do one postpartum visit as, uh, as birth doulas. Um, but if you're looking for more postpartum help, um, we do have some postpartum doulas on the team that um, would come in just for postpartum. Yep. And they do day and night? Yep. So we only offer days right now because our, day, our nighttime doula is pregnant and she okay. stopped working. There are nighttime doulas or postpartum doulas that do as well. And we'd be able to get you a contact with somebody. Yeah. 
just that being yeah. specified. Yeah. So for the yeah. actual postpartum follow-up, what we usually bring is we bring a gift. We bring, um, so we always ask the families if it's okay to take notes during the birth. So we bring those birth notes and then we talk about this, what was your experience like? Is there anything you want to talk about? Any concerns, questions? How's we doing? If you want us to take out your trash, we'll take out your trash. Mm -hmm. um, so I've helped moms with baby wearing. You know, they got all these new baby wearers for their registry. And I'm like, this is, I did not. So I've never been able to do it. And so being able to help assist with those. Um, you know, even just some more breastfeeding questions, breast, breast original questions, just all of that good stuff. Um, but then we also do one to two prenatal appointments um, with you to, and at that time we'd come to your home so we can see your home. We don't mind walking into a random stranger's house at 2 a.m. We're coming to join you at home when you're in labor. Uh, that would not be fun. We also want to meet your pets because your pets are the first ones to know that you're in labor. Um, they will let you know if you don't already know. Um, <laughs> yeah oh yeah no they'll know for sure um so yeah so we do one to two postpartum or prenatal visits uh come to your home we want to meet you and your uh birth partner and everything we'll go over um what your plans are where your goals are for the birth we can help you write a birth plan if you'd like uh, or we can just review what you've already written um and just chat about all things to expect uh hopefully you have a childhood education class so um, we can kind of just like, brief overview of what you learned, um, anything that you still have any questions on, uh, go over when to call us, um, and when to call the doctor, and then of course, if you call us and we're like, this, we need to be on the phone with the doctor, let's call, well, yeah, we'll let you know that as well. Yep. For the birth plan, you have like, specific questions that you want to ask the Part. I mean, we can never speak for you. We can remind you that there are specific things that are on your birth plan or that, that you want and specifically say, hey, there was something you really wanted or didn't want. Mention it. That would be a good time to talk. Or buy you more time to say, hey, okay, everybody needs a minute. We need five minutes, something that you need to discuss yeah. something in fees, or just the two of you. Um, Yes. And there are different doulas as well. There yeah. are doulas that will never say anything. That will see stuff and not say anything. Caitlin and I. No, we're, no, 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 we're, no, I can't. I if could. we see something, worst case, I would just do this to dad. Yeah, and that's a lot of what the prenatal <laughs> visit is as well, is like maybe setting up like hey, if I'm looking at you, like, if I'm giving you a little side eye or like, hey, dad, did you guys want a second to, and, you know, we can talk to the nurses without talking to the nurses through you guys. So, um, we love nurses. Yeah, and absolutely. Usually they are yeah. very yeah. respected. Yeah. Sometimes they just can't take it. <laughs> have to find ways to kind of work around them. Yeah. Um, but again, that is something to ask the people, how comfortable are you helping me advocate for myself? Absolutely. Or if you see something. Will you speak up again? They quickly find out just by how comfortable they are you know, answering that question, how comfortable they are going to be in that high stress most of the time scenario. No. So, I've had clients who, you know, the nurse wanted them to sign up, sign something like right now. And, you know, she was a lovely nurse and everything, but I could tell mom and dad were kind of sitting back and forth at each other, like, hold on, what am I signing? What am I signing? Did you guys have a minute to, you know, discuss yeah. this? And oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, let me go. And the nurse immediately left, and I walked out of the room too. And you know, we let them have their minute to stop and discuss. So we have a very, very long intake form. Yeah. We also go over any medical things. Like we just want to know as much as possible. Be a second brain in the room. Um, of course, the, your partners or the ones that are closest. They know you the best, and they're supposed to be speaking for you as well. Um, but sometimes they forget, and then we can be like, hey, remember, this is what we had discussed when your brain cells were not in labor mode, um, and that helps. And same with, like, position changes and comfort measures and everything. So um, even if you get the epidural, you're not going to be trapped to one position, you know, on your back the whole time. We want you moving. We want you, you know, flip off into the bed as much as possible. And we can, we've got a whole wide variety of positions we can try even just in the bed. 
if your goal is unmedicated, then we've got a lot of different ways that we can assist you. Um, physicians to help at every station where baby is located in your pelvis and all that. Um, so there's lots that we can do to assist in both ways. Um, and then, if, you know, a C-section becomes in if there's lots we can do. What do we do for like the interviewing of all the doulas? Is it like do we set up like interviews with everybody or do you like so recommend like, like one or two? Usually a family still out in contact for then I'm in contact. Uh, mm -hmm. I set the scheduling link and then everybody who is available is going to be on that call. Okay. So it's like one call and then if you get to meet and there might be yeah. I mean I think all of you guys are doing probably only one or two doulas available if it's right now on our team, but some of us book out six months in advance. Good question. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you guys have our contact information on here. Um, and yeah, I talked about that. I didn't talk about photography. I'm a birth photographer. Um, on a birth balance.